What did you think of the of the rookie linebackers? Because Scott McLuhan did an article or did an interview, I think, with Matt Barrows from The Athletic, um, and he, as he does every year, and he, he kind of talked guy by guy in the draft class. And one of the guys that he really loved a couple years ago was was Talanoa Hafanga. This year he really loved Jalen Graham. And then Graham, this was done right after the draft, and then Graham looked terrific uh, in the in the OTAs, Jordan. I mean, he was just up and down the field. Um, they list him at, at six feet, 225, but he looks bigger than that. Uh, he definitely is smooth in coverage. Plays, he ran 464, but I think he plays quite a bit faster than that. D. Winters ran 449. The interesting thing about Winters, he was the six round pick out of TCU. He looked great in the national semi against Michigan and is a really instinctive blitzer. Um, but he also had really, like, I think like 28 or 30 inch uh, vertical, and the lower body explosiveness wasn't there, which is why he fell to day three late on day three. What do you think of Graham and Winters? Uh, do you think either has an advantage? It's a very loaded linebacking core. It's going to be tough to make this team at linebacker. Yeah, that's the most difficult part, right? And I think that's the hardest part when we talk about, like, expectations for rookies is that these guys, if we're grading them on, like, a standard of what to expect from an NFL rookie, these guys can come in and look really good and pass that bar. But this team is so good everywhere that what ends up happening is a lot of these guys will either be cut or relegated to a practice squad role right away. And then a lot of times the takeaway is, oh, well, they're not very good or they missed on this pick when it's in reality just the fact that it's very hard to find a role on this team early on because of how deep they are. And it's not even just the starters. It's the depth they have behind that. And you look at the, like the Niners are the best linebacking room in the league. I don't think that's something that's really up for debate. I'd be happy to debate it with anybody who would, have an argument for someone else, but they're absolutely loaded at that position. And then you start getting in to some of the guys they have in the depth there. When you have the Oren Burks is the uh, Marcelino McCrary balls, the Demetrius Flanagan fouls. Like they just have so many guys that can step in and have proven time and time again, when they need to step in and you slide into a prominent role there that they're capable of doing so. So if we, if you have a guy like D winners or Jalen Graham, where they're not, you know, making a huge splash in year one, or maybe they are on the practice squad for a good amount of the year, or they get waived and picked up by another team. I don't think that means that the 49ers missed on them. I just think it's unfortunately one of the few consequences of having a really good football team. The thing that stood out to me about D winners was that his measurables were almost identical to Dre Greenlaw's. Like if you go down and you put both of their measurables side by side, it's literally almost the exact same thing. So I do wonder if that was coincidence or if the 49ers have identified certain physical archetypes where they're like, okay, this is really what we're targeting. And on top of it, this guy has a very high pedigree and played in big games and showed out in those high pressure moments. So um, one thing I really did like about D winners too, was uh, I, I spoke at length with his defensive coordinator, the articles on Niners nations from a couple months ago, if anybody wants to check it out and anybody who watched national championship game, that game was over with, five minutes left in the second quarter, right? Like Georgia blew the doors off of TCU and he talked about his composure and his relentlessness in a game that was, you know, you, you know, in that moment, you don't want to give up, but you pretty much know what the writing's on the wall. And he kind of spoke about the way that he responded to adversity and the way he was going out there and still giving that effort and still rallying teammates, even when they were, well, I think the final score was like 63 to what, seven or something like that. It was, one of the most lopsided college football games I've ever seen that was a playoff or, you know, big time bowl game. And D winners was a guy that was still giving it all out there. So I think that kind of speaks to the football character that the 49ers target as well. Um, I'm really interested to see Jalen Graham. I just have done a little bit more research on D winners because the more and more I looked into it, the more and more I'm like, man, this really feels like a guy who's going to end up sticking with this organization for the foreseeable future. So he's kind of the guy I'm leaning towards right now. Yeah, Win Winters, I mean, when you saw him shoot those gaps and then we talked to him and, and somebody, I think it was Lombardi, was like, hey, you know, they utilize you as a blitzer. And he's like, I wasn't blitzing there. And it, it you know, it tells you that this guy's really in his film study. And when he sees it, there's no hesitation. And he just shot gaps. Those weren't called blitzes. Those were him doing film study, reading and reacting and just being decisive and getting into the backfield, and, man, that's exciting to see. I'm looking at that linebacking core. I think there'll be six backers on the team. Greenlaw, Warner, 
I think Marcelino was going to be the third starter. Then you've got the two rookies. Uh, that's five right there. That means you got one spot for a special teamer, and you got three really good special team backers in Oren Burks, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, and Curtis Robinson. I got to think that um, the Niners might be able to make a trade involving one of their linebackers because they, they got three really dependable, solid special teams linebackers. Um, and if they go with Winters and Graham and Marcelino and Greenlaw and Warner, you know, odds are one of those guys is going to get moved. Um, that, that to me is going to be interesting at the cut down. It's like, which linebacker will they act? You know, unless there's an injury, there's always a chance for an injury, but I don't see them cutting Graham and I don't see them cutting Winters. Um, and I, I think Marcelino is going to have a huge year. So they did lose Aziz Al Shair, but man, they're deep here. This is one of the deeper linebacking cores in football. Absolutely, and you know the the loss of Al Shair is something too, where it's like they just they seem to replace guys and they replace production in a way where you have to kind of give them the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. But I'll be honest, the last couple of years, Aziz Al Shair has been one of my favorite football players on this team to watch week yeah. after week, and he was a guy when you go back and you start pouring through the film a little bit. Just he he was exceptionally talented, but he played with just a level of physicality where you could see that wearing down offenses over the course of a game where, you know, when you're getting hit like that over the course of 60 minutes, it really does take its toll. And I think things like that kind of get lost in translation sometimes. And the 49ers defense is so talented for so many reasons. But I think that having that kind of enforcer at the second level really does do a lot to damage the psyche of an opposing offense, especially when you're trying to get a running game going and you have Dre Greenlaw and Aziz al and Fred Warner shooting in gaps towards you, um, you know, driving you into the turf the way that those guys do. I, I just think that he's somebody that – I'm not saying they can't replace him because I think that they will be able to given their track record. I just think that his loss is a little bit overlooked at this point in time because of how valuable he really was to this football team over the last couple of years. As for the special teams thing, I have to think that it's going to be Oren Burks because Oren Burks was kind of brought in as that special teams ace who had all that great experience in Green Bay. There was years when Green Bay's special teams was really having a rough time. He was one of the few bright spots they had there. I, I honestly, I think he's going to be the third starter. Uh, you know, it, we'll see how it goes during camp. I'm not sticking to that. I really do like McCurry Ball, but after going back and watching some games last season, he looked really good when he was out there with the starting defense. So I think that that's going to be one of the more underrated competitions because you know the top two spots are locked in. So I'm sure the attention will be elsewhere. Obviously, the quarterback battle and uh, funny enough, the kicker battle will probably be the top two people are paying attention to. But that third, fourth, fifth linebacker spot is really going to be something to watch because they have too many talented players. They don't have enough spots. And it might be a situation like a couple of years ago when they traded Jonas Griffith to the Broncos, um, got back a sixth and a seventh. I think they sent Griffith in a seventh and then that uh, got back a sixth and a seventh in return. And with the way this team drafts on day three, like if your alternative is cutting a guy, you got to make a move like that and see where he ends up when you uh, make that pick in the draft in the years to come.